Hello and welcome to the next video on wired and wireless networks. We're going to be looking at hosting in the cloud. This is really a continuation from the previous video. I've sort of divided this subject matter into two videos just to keep the videos a bit shorter and more manageable. So again, we're looking at key technologies needed to make the internet work. And this time we're going to be looking at local and external web hosting. And we're going to be looking at cloud computing and the cloud. So hosting. Websites need to be placed on a web server. This is known as hosting. So if you want a website, whether it's just web pages or videos or music or pictures, if you want other people to be able to access it, you need to put that information on a web server that can be then be connected to the internet and people can then view the information on that web page. So again, that's the example here, whether it's software or files or a website or a database or whatever, it needs to be on a web server so that other people can then access it on the internet. There are two different ways you can do hosting. You can have local hosting or external hosting. Local hosting means that the website or the related information and documents are held on your computer. To do this, you need to use special software to set up your computer as a web server. So you can use any sort of computer, a laptop or desktop. Doesn't need to be a special powerful computer system. You just need to be using the right software. Very common, uh, commonly used piece of software is Apache. Apache is, free is a free download. You can download it, install it on your computer, set it up, and your computer is now a web server. Other people can then access your computer on the internet and view those web pages. Well, that's exactly what I've just said. Yeah, it's all there. So what are the advantages of local hosting? Well, local hosting is cheaper than external hosting as there is no rental charge. You're not having to rent other people's computer servers. You're using your own computer. There is an additional charge there. As I said, the most commonly used piece of software is Apache, and that's a free download. So you don't have to pay for that. You have full control over your website. You decide what technologies you're using, what combination of technologies, you're in charge. There are some disadvantages, however. You need specialized knowledge and skills. Setting a web server isn't a trivial task. Maintaining it, dealing, it with, dealing with problems, you're going to have to have a bit of training. You're going to have to do a bit of research before you can do that. Your computer has to always be switched on and available. Obviously, if you're hosting a web server on your own personal computer, you can't just turn that off when you go to bed. Otherwise, people are not going to be able to access your web pages and resources. You have to be responsible for backing up your own data and dealing with any technical problems. So there's quite a bit of work for you involved in setting up your own local host. If your website becomes popular, bandwidth could be a problem on a typical home connection. So as a home user, there'll be a company that you're using called an ISP to provide your internet connection. And usually you'll get a certain amount of upload and download speed. Uh, often there's a limit to how much you can send and receive on your connection. If you're running a really popular website and you're getting thousands or even millions of customers, you're going to have a lot of problems with bandwidth. They're not going to be able to access your information quickly and you might be reaching a data cap and getting extra charges by your, ex your, by your ISP. So that gives us the alternative option of external hosting. This means you pay another company a fee, usually monthly or possibly yearly, to host your website on one of their servers. This means that you don't have to worry about bandwidth or technical problems or backups or security, hopefully, because this external company is going to deal with all that. And hopefully they've got a lovely data center. It's going to look something like this. Lots of big, powerful servers, really nice computers, lots of bandwidth, lots of storage space, and they can deal with all the technical problems for you. So what are the disadvantages of using this system? Well, you've got to pay for it. It's not going to be free. Well, it might be free if you've got a very small website, 
But if you're a popular website, you've got lots of content, you're going to have to pay for it, especially if you want hundreds of thousands or millions of people viewing your web page on a regular basis. If their server, oh my God, I'm just going to cross that out. Pretend you didn't see that. I can spell honestly. So if their server goes offline, your website will be unavailable until the external host can fix the problem. So again, you can't just fix it yourself. If you have the technical skills, you have to wait for them to fix it. If they upgrade their software, it might be incompatible with some of the code used on your site. So you might have to go there and change the code, use a more modern way of doing it because they've upgraded their system. So again, that's more work for you. The cloud. It's a nice buzzword. Doesn't mean very much, but we do need to know about it. Cloud computing or the cloud is when people use software and services via the internet. So for most of you, this is old hat. This is something you've been doing your whole life. For older people like myself, using the cloud is still a bit strange. It's a bit new. The idea of using software and services that are located on just some random web server somewhere on the internet is a kind of unique idea. It's a modern idea. Young people have grown up with it, but it's still strange for older people. So again, that's the idea. You've got all these software and services on the internet, and you can access it from your desktop, your notebook, your tablet, your smartphone. You can access it as long as you've got internet connection. So here's some example of software and services that use cloud computing. I'm sure lots of these you're familiar with. Online storage, you can save all your documents on Dropbox or OneDrive or iCloud or lots of different competing uh, companies. And this was a few years ago, the main use of cloud computing for normal people. You could have all this external storage online. You could save your documents there and then access them from any computer that an internet connection. But nowadays we're using a lot of software and services online as well. We're using Google Docs or Office 365. We can use word processors and spreadsheets online. So again, this is not using uh, Office software that you've downloaded and installed onto your own computer. The software is located on a web server somewhere on the internet and you're accessing it through your web browser. You've got all the common streaming services, Spotify, Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, again, you're accessing all these services via your web browser. You're not downloading things on a DVD and then playing it on your computer. All this data, all this information is located online. So just to make sure that's clear, the key to cloud computing is that the data and software that you're using are stored on a server in a data center somewhere in the world, not on your own secondary storage. So that's not on your hard drive. That's not on an SSD. The data and the services you're using are on a data center on the internet somewhere in the world. You don't need to know where it is as long as you've got an internet connection. So what are the advantages of the cloud? Well, the data can be accessed from any device, from any location, as long as you have an internet connection. Your data is automatically backed up. If you're using Dropbox or OneDrive, you don't have to worry about making duplicates and keeping them in a safe location. Your data is backed up on multiple data centers around the world, hopefully. You can share files with other users easily. You can email them a link, whatever. They can access the material. You can collaborate on projects. Using Google Docs, you can work on a joint project together. Somebody can be writing on it. You can be writing on it. Your friends can all work together on the same document and share that information. Even if you're not in the same physical location, you can still collaborate around the world. You save space on your own secondary storage. That's why a lot of mobile devices, a lot of smartphones, tablets give you quite a lot of cloud storage because those devices only have a limited internal storage. It might have 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of internal storage, but that's okay because you've got cloud storage that you can use to, sh to kind of save your documents, save your files, especially photographs and videos. And that means you can make the maximum use of your internal storage. 
But what are the disadvantages to the cloud? Well, as I inferred earlier, you need a reliable internet connection, especially if you're traveling around, you're going to the countryside, you're going to different countries. Are you going to have a good internet connection? Can you use 4G mobile internet? Do you have Wi-Fi available? If you don't have those and you need to use a cloud service, you're in trouble. You need to trust your data to a third party company. Can they handle things like malware and hackers and all the other security concerns? I mean, if you're a personal user, maybe that's not such a big deal. But if you are a big business and you're using cloud services, you need to know that the company that you're entrusting your data to is going to keep it secure. Although some services are free, some may charge a monthly or annual fee. So if you want to use, I think, up to four gigabytes of drop on Dropbox, that's fine. If you want to have 100 gigabytes of storage online, you're going to have to pay them money. YouTube is free. It's paid for by advertising. But if you're using Netflix, you have to pay a monthly fee. All right, let's just go through that in summary, guys. Websites need to be hosted on a server so they can be accessed across the Internet. Hosting can be local. That means that the website and related files are on your computer. Or hosting can be external. That means the website and all the related data is hosted on a third party's server. The cloud is when we use software and services via the Internet. The cloud is a huge growth at the moment. We're using increasing amount of cloud services. When people say things like the cloud and cloud services, it just means using web servers on the Internet. All right. Hopefully that you've had a good time on this video. Hopefully you've learned something. Please like, please subscribe or unlike and unsubscribe. It's entirely up to you. I think I'm going to go have a cup of coffee now. Have a very good day.